Good morning, everyone. Buenos dias a todos. If we can go and take our seats, we're about to begin our services real soon. Si podemos tomar nuestros asientos, vamos a empezar los servicios muy pronto. Alrighty, once again, good morning to everyone here. It's great to have everyone here. Buenos dias a todos aquí. Nos da mucho gusto que todos están aquí con nosotros hoy esta mañana. Um, want to extend an invitation to our visitors. It's, it's great to have you all here. We would love for you all to stay with us uh, shortly after services so we can get to know you all um, and just enjoy fellowship with you all. Uh, para nuestros uh, invitados, quiero decir primero otra vez uh, buenos días a ustedes. Nos da mucho gusto que ustedes decidieron estar aquí con, hoy con nosotros. Uh, después de los servicios, si ustedes pueden quedar con nosotros un poco para que podamos hablar con ustedes y conocerlos un poco más. Um, I'm going to go over the announcements right now. Voy a decir unos anuncios ahorita. Uh, but please make sure to grab a bulletin. Por favor, agarren un bulletin. Here it contains the list of announcements and important prayers uh, for people who need the prayers. Uh, este tiene la lista de oraciones uh, y también los anuncios de cosas que van a pasar muy pronto. So I'm going to go over a few of the announcements right now. Voy a decir uno de los anuncios ahorita. Um, first off, I want to announce... Um, we recently had a, a brother and a sister, uh, they placed membership with us, James and Cindy Biggerstaff. Um, so they are now, you know, members with our congregation. Uh, so if you see them here, you know, please do congratulate them uh, for joining our family and, you know, uh, be, being a positive influence with us. Hmm? I don't know. You want to stand? Okay, yeah. <laughs> That's James Biggerstaff, yeah. So, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's... Yeah, yeah, so uh, they recently placed members, uh, membership with us, um, so they are part of our family now, and, you know, just extend the warm invitation, of course. Uh, tenemos un, unos hermanos, un hermano y hermano, uh, James y Cindy Biggerstaff, que pusieron membresía con, con nuestra iglesia, con nuestra congregación. Entonces, si tienen el tiempo uh, para decir los olas, para dar los que sienten parte de la familia. Esa es la mejor manera que lo puedo decir. Um, a couple other announcements. This Tuesday, uh, there will be the ladies' class and the elders' meeting. Uh, the ladies' class will be uh, yeah, uh, Tuesday, September the 10th uh, at 6.30 in the evening, and it's going to be uh, in the fellowship hall, whereas the men's, the, the elders' meeting will be uh, also September the 10th, Tuesday, 7 p.m., but that'll be here in the auditorium. Um, so just a heads up about that. Uh, este... Este martes vamos a tener la clase de las mujeres y también uh, la junta de los ancianos um, y, los, y los hombres. Uh, la clase de las mujeres va a ser este martes día 10 de septiembre a seis y media de la tarde. Va a pas uh, lo van a tener uh, el estudio bíblico, va a ser en el fellowship hall, en la cocina. Y uh, junta de los ancianos va a ser a las siete de la tarde, un poco después, y va a estar aquí en el auditorio. Um, so if you, have any, if you have any questions about those, uh, please see BC or Barbie. Si tienen preguntas sobre esos, por favor vean a BC o Barbie. Um, also, oh, also Wednesday, uh, the next day, Wednesday at 6 p.m., so about an hour before the Wednesday night services, uh, the elders will be meeting here to pray with any church members. Um, so if you wish to speak with the elders, ask for prayers from them personally, uh, please see Hugo or Bill about that. También este miércoles, 6 de la tarde, como una hora antes de los servicios, los ancianos, ancianos van a estar aquí uh, para orar por miembros. Entonces, si usted tiene unas oraciones, quiere hablar con los ancianos, van a estar aquí uh, en la iglesia una hora antes de los servicios en la tarde de, de miércoles, como las 6. And a couple other announcements. Um, uh, Sister Margarita Rodriguez is asking for prayers for her family, so please keep them in your prayers. La hermana Margarita Rodriguez está pidiendo oraciones por su familia. Por favor, tener ellos en sus oraciones. Um, and also, uh, please pray for Art and Milena. Um, por favor, oran por los hermana y hermana 
Art, Amy Lena. I know most of us here remember they used to be members with us, but they moved up north. Um, pray for their family. Uh, Milena is going to be, uh, she's going to be having, giving birth to twins, and uh, one of the twins is going to be needing heart surgery upon birth, so just please keep them in your prayers, uh, that Lord willing, everything goes well. Um, y también para orar por la hermana Art y Milena, uh, como muchos de ustedes saben, estuvieron miembros aquí uh, desde un poco tiempo, uh, pero ellos movieron al norte, en Texas, uh, van a tener uh, do, do, dos niños, va, va, van a nacer, uh, pero uno de ellos van a estar surgiendo en la corazón uh, cuando nace. Entonces, por favor, para tener su familia en sus oraciones, que todo está bien por ellos. Uh, those are the announcements that I have right now. Esos son los anuncios que yo tengo ahorita. Are there any urgent announcements, announcements that need to be made that are not in the bulletin? Oh, yes, yes. I, yeah, I, one last one. I forgot. Um, uh, please pray for Brother Salazar. He's going to be having uh, surgery this Friday the 13th, so just keep him in your prayers that everything goes well with that too. Y también el hermano Salazar va a tener cirugía este viernes al día 13, entonces por favor para tener él en sus oraciones. Thank you, Sebastian. Hay otros anuncios que necesitamos hacer que no están en el boletín. Okay, so, so with that we'll go and begin services. Con eso vamos a empezar los servicios. Uh, as always, please silence your cell phones. Remember, this time is dedicated to the Lord. Por favor, este tiempo paguen sus celulares. Recuerda, este tiempo está dedicado al Señor. With that, we'll be, uh, go ahead and begin our services. Con eso vamos a empezar los servicios. Thank you. Good morning. Son nuestros cantos, himno 195. Start with song number 508. Number 508. 195. Let's sing. Cantemos. Oh, que Salvador es mi Cristo Jesús. Oh, que Salvador es aquí. El sabor más malo de su iniquidad y vida eterna le da. Me escondo en la roca que es Cristo el Señor y ahí nada yo temeré. Me escondo en la roca que es mi salvador y en él siempre confiaré y siempre con él viviré. Iré a mirar a los que aquí dejé y con ellos yo estaré. Mas quiero mirar a mi Cristo Jesús, el cual murió en dura cruz. Me escondo la roca que es Cristo el Señor y ahí nada yo temeré. Me escondo la roca que es mi Salvador. Y en él siempre confiaré, y siempre con él viviré. Y cuando esta vida termine aquí, la lucha abandonaré. Entonces a Cristo yo voy a mirar, por su nombre daré. Me escondo la roca que es Cristo Señor, y ahí nada yo temeré. Me escondo la roca que es mi salvador, y en él siempre confiaré, y siempre con él viviré. morning, our song before the Lord's service, the Lord's Supper, will be number 315, number 315, <coughs> 315. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the prince of glory died. My precious <coughs> King, I count but lost and poor come 
contempt on of my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my God. All the vain things that told me Sacrifice them to his blood. See from his head, his hands, his feet. Sorrow and love flow mingle all time. Such love and so great, O thorns compose so rich a crown, were the whole realm of nature small love so amazing and so divine demand my soul my life my own Scripture reading this morning will be from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. Esta mañana vamos a leer de 1 de Corintios capítulo 11, versículos 23 al 26. It says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betray betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Y dice, Porque yo recibí del Señor lo que también nos ha enseñado, que el Señor Jesús, la noche que fue entregado, tomó pan, y habiendo dado gracias, lo partió, y dijo, Tomad, comed, esto es mi cuerpo que por vosotros es partido. Haced esto en memoria de mí. Asimismo tomó también la copa después de haber cenado diciendo, esta copa es un nuevo pacto en mi sangre, haced esto todas las veces que la beberéis en memoria de mí. Así pues, todas las veces que comieres este, este pan y beberéis esta copa, la muerte del Señor anunciáis hasta que Él venga. Let us pray for the bread. Vamos a dar por el pan. Dear Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this morning for allowing us to be here this first day of the week so that we could have the, we could learn a little bit more about your word and have the opportunity to participate of your Holy Supper. I ask you now that you bless this bread, and as we partake of it, let us make memory of the body of Christ, the body that was nailed to the cross, so that he could suffer and die for our sins. Bless this act, and all those who will partake from it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Gracias, Padre, que estás en el cielo en todo lugar de Dios, santificado sea tu nombre. Te damos gracias por este primer día de la semana, por darnos la oportunidad para poder reunirnos para aprender un poco más de tu palabra y poder participar de tu Santa Cena. Te pido a Dios que bendiga este pan y que al comer de este pan, que hagamos morir el cuerpo de Cristo Jesús, el cuerpo que fue clavado en nuestra cruz para sufrir y morir por nuestros pecados. Bendice este acto a los que van a participar de él. En nombre de Cristo Jesús oramos. Amén.
Let us pray for the fruit of the vine. Vamos a orar por el fruto de la, fruto de la vid. Bendito Padre Dios, en la misma manera te pido que bendigas este fruto de la vid, que al tomarlo de esta copa, que hagamos morir de la sangre que fue derramada en esta cruz, la sangre preciosa que nos limpia de nuestros pecados y nos da la oportunidad para tener vida eterna, Dios. Una vez más te pido que bendigas este acto, los que van a participar de él. En nombre de Cristo Jesús oramos. Amén. Your Heavenly Father, I ask you now to bless the fruit of the vine, and as we drink it from this cup, let us make memory of the blood of Christ, the blood that was shed on the cross, so it could wash away our sins and give us the opportunity for eternal life. I ask you once again to bless this act and all those who will partake from it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This concludes the Lord's Supper. We continue now with the, the next part of our worship service, the offering. Aquí concluye la cena del Señor y continuamos con otra parte de la oración, la ofrenda. Vamos a orar. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, this morning we give you thanks for the many wonderful blessings that you pro provide for us each day of our lives. And this morning we return a part of those blessings with, with this offering. I ask you that you to bless this offering so that your work may continue here in Wesico. And I ask you to bless Continue to bless each and every one of us here. Thank you for everything. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gracias, Padre, que estás en el en todo lugar de Dios. Esta mañana te damos gracias por las bendiciones que nos das cada día de nuestras vidas. Y te regresamos una parte de esas bendiciones con esta ofrenda. Te pido, Dios, que bendigas esta ofrenda, Dios, para que tu obra siga aquí en Huesaco. Y te pido, Dios, que nos sigas bendiciendo a cada uno de nosotros. Gracias por todo. En nombre de Cristo Jesús, oramos. Amén.
song before, <coughs> excuse me, our song before our first prayer will be number 800. Number 800. <coughs> what a friend we have in Jesus, all our sins and grace to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. Oh, because we do not carry Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful? Who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and have believed? Done, come, but with a Lord of care, precious Savior, still our refuge. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Do thy friends despise, forsake thee? Take it to the Lord in prayer. In his arms he'll take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. If it's convenient, let's be standing for opening prayer. <coughs> Time does not permit us to take everything to the Lord in prayer that's on the mind of us all. But would you pray with me? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for the blessings you've given to us. We thank the God for the rains, and we thank you, Lord, for a cooler day. We thank you, God, for the blessings that we have that are part of your creation. And we especially thank you, God, for those things, the blessings that we have because of Jesus of redemption for those who have turned to him and put on in that watery grave our Savior to have had our sins washed away and to be made a part of your family especially God we thank you for that we thank you for redemption we're your children and we still mess up we thank you for your forgiveness as we seek that forgiveness. would ask that any time that things go wrong with us that we would quickly repent and get back in your grace. Thank you, God. Heavenly Father, there are a number of folks that are listed in the bulletin that are, that are ill, that have requested prayers. We pray you be blessings to them and help them to be restored to good health and whatever it may be. But this morning, we, we think of uh, Brother Salazar, they'd be going in for surgery on Friday. And we think of the little baby that is to be born and already has some heart trouble. And we know the great things that can be done, but the real healing comes from you. And we ask your blessings for all these folks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for times that we have to be able to assemble together and to study a portion of your word and to sing songs that encourage one another. We thank you, God, for those that have the ability to help lead us in these songs. 
We thank you for those that have the ability and the willness, willingness to stand before groups such as this and teach and preach your word. We pray that you'd be with them, that you'd be with Sebastian today, with Hugo as he would be speaking in, uh, with, uh, in the Spanish-speaking group. We ask Heavenly Father that you'd be with the church here that would be able to reach out in the community and others would see Jesus living in us, that we would represent you well in this life. We'd be true ambassadors with Jesus. Heavenly Father, we ask your blessings upon our country. There's so many things going on in this whole world. We got wars, we got rumors of wars. We'd ask God that you'd especially be able to uh, help the problems in Israel and Ukraine and, and, and some other places that are going on that, that there'd be some resolution to, to the death, to the destruction, to the problems that are there. Oh God, we pray so much you'd be with our country. We'd ask that you'd help us, Lord, to turn to you and to be a godly nation. We pray, Lord, that as, as elections are coming up and, and uh, at every level, locally and nationally, oh Lord, please help us to have people that would be in the positions of, of authority and power and trust, that they would be those type of people that would look to you for guidance and that you'd bless us and help us, oh God, that we'd take advantage of the freedoms that we have in this great land to do your, your, your work, to do what you want us to do. Thank you for hearing us. We ask your blessings on our households. That with every one of our households, Lord, would be, would be sound in mind and in body and that we would all grow spiritually. We recognize, Lord, we need you every day. Thank you for hearing us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. <coughs> Please mark in your hymn book number 911, 911, as our hymn of encouragement following Sebastian's lesson this morning, number 911. At this time, we'll sing number 701, 701. Seven hundred one. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee, the follies of sin, I resign. My gracious Redeemer. My Savior art thou, if ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. I love thee because thou hast first loved me. And firm just my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love faithful wearing the crowns on thy brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. In mansions of glory and endless delight, I'll ever adore thee in heaven so I'll sing with the glittering cry. 
crown my brow. If ever I love thee, my Jesus, tis now. Good morning. Before we begin, actually, let me set up the Awesome. Trust me, it's not going to be like that. That's just the title screen. So if you can't see it, it'll, it'll turn white and you'll see it. But before we begin, let's start with a word of prayer. Father God, we, we just thank you so, so much for a beautiful day you've given to us. Uh, as mentioned before, we thank you for the breeze. We thank you for the cool weather. We thank you for the freedom that we have to be here this morning, Father, to read your scriptures to read them aloud, to study them, to learn from them. And Father, we just thank you for the fellowship that we have together here, Father. In your son, in his sacrifice that we just remembered. And we pray, Father, that as we go throughout this, this time that we, to, that we read your word, that we allow your spirit to, to allow us to understand your word a little bit more. That we open up our hearts and our minds, that we don't come in closed-minded, but coming eager, willing to, to learn and, and to hear what your word has to tell us, Father. We thank you so much for just the blessing that it is to have your word, and it's in Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. Actually, I didn't connect that. Okay. Um, it's been a while since I've been up here and I've preached. I, I did a quick little research to see when the last time I preached was, and I think it was almost two months ago. And I'm going to be honest, two months has been too long. It feels, uh, feels good to be, to be able to put more time aside to study the scriptures, to, to read it, and to see what it is that I can come forward and, and deliver to you guys. And, and um, I think I say this a lot during my lessons, but I think when I'm making a, a lesson or I'm preparing it and I'm structuring it, I'm realizing that most of the time this, this lesson applies to me first. Uh, it's something that I feel like I needed in, in, to hear, I needed to learn from, I need to improve on, and, and I think it's worth sharing to, to the other members of this congregation that we can probably, hopefully, be encouraged, be edified, be built up in whatever it is that we can read from the Word. And so... Hopefully, whatever I deliver today can be something that we can take with us uh, as we continue throughout the week, as we continue throughout our lives, and, and uh, hopefully analyze ourselves a little bit more. I think it's important to be very mindful in the time that we are here, to be very mindful in the things that we're doing, especially right now in the time that we're studying the Word, not to just be here and listen to me and see the Scriptures, but to also reflect and to, and to think about our life and to analyze where it is we're at, where it is we'd like to be, where do we not want to be. Um, I think those are very important things to do, and so hopefully this is something that I can uh, encourage you guys with. But as you can see, the title of my lesson this morning is Our Light. Uh, I think a little bit, we were talking a little bit about light and darkness this morning in Kelly's class, but uh, I found it very interesting that in the beginning of the world, uh, we, we had nothing. In the beginning, there was darkness, there was a void, there was absolutely nothing. There was emptiness and, and darkness. And when God came, he, he brought meaning to this world, to this universe, to this life that we have. He brought fullness and he brought light as well. And we know the scriptures, he says that he brought, he, he separated day and night, um, allowing there to be a dark time, allowing there to be a light time. And although he did bring that day and night, there is still a darkness that is very present in this world today. And it's very present because of sin. We were talking about Adam and Eve this morning, the original sin, when, when we begin to serve ourselves, we begin to, I was talking to Kelly as well, that the, a, a, a big origination of sin is from our own desires, is from our own, um, our own thoughts. Sin begins with us because we're selfish people. We're humans. We, we have the desires of the flesh, of our eyes, and there's a lot of reasons why sin can come about, but that's why there's still a darkness today in this age. In Ephesians chapter 6, 
verse 12, it says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. I want to put focus on what it says there, over this present darkness. I don't think this is a, uh, is a surprise to any of us, but we know that the darkness in this world is very real, and it's something that we can see all around us. You can see it in many things, and just to, to list a few, Timothy, Paul, Paul was telling Timothy, he says, now we know that the law is good. If one uses it lawfully, understands this, that the law is not laid down for the just, but for the lawless, for the disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for the unholy and profane, for those who strike their, their fathers and mothers, for murderers, the sexually immoral, men who practice homosexuality, enslavers, liars, perjurers, and whatever else is contrary to sound doctrine in accordance with the gospel of the glory of the blessed God with, with which I have been entrusted. I remember as a child or as a kid, younger, and we would go through some verses, maybe Carrie would be preaching or I'd be listening to a lesson. There's a couple of verses in the Bible that are just like this, that list many, and many different kinds of sins, many and uh, different kinds of evil in this world. And this is one of the verses that I found that had a lot of them. But the thing is, is that there's a lot more than just these. There's a lot of darkness around us. And, and if you really pay attention you're going to notice that there's a whole bunch of darkness around our life. When you look at your life and the people that you're surrounding, can you see any of these people? Are you any of these people? Are your friends any of these kind of people? Do the people that we surround ourselves, our environments, have any of these kind of people? I can say for a fact that I know there's a pretty good chance that every single one of us lives around this, that we see this, that we notice it. And I think it's very important to bring this up, because that, just, that, that means that our life cannot just be on cruise control. We can't just go through the motions and we can't exit these doors today and just continue living life as, not, as if nothing is going on. We see the darkness that's around us, and if we don't, we need to make sure that we start opening our eyes and paying attention to this. Because sometimes we can get lost. We can, we can lose focus of what's really going on in this world. Uh, we can get lost in the plans and the activities that we have. I know that I'm not one of them, but there are many people who live by a planner, live by a schedule, have things laid out. They know what their days are going to look like. They know what their weeks are going to look like. Man, I think they can even tell you what their whole year has got planned for them. And the thing is, is that when we get lost in all of the things that we have to do throughout the day, all of the activities that we have set up, we can lose focus on the real war, on the real battle that's happening all around us, seeing that darkness that's there. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8, he says, Be sober-minded, be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. We're called to be sober-minded. When I think of being sober-minded, the first word being sober is kind of like the opposite of being drunk. When you're drunk, the idea is that you're not able to put full attention to it you're not focused you're not able to be your full self and give your 100 percent we're being asked to be sober minded to be fully attentive to be aware i think it's important that we're aware that we're focused and attentive in everything that's going on and when we can when we fail to do this we start losing we, we start losing track and allowing ourselves to be vulnerable allowing the adversary the devil to be able to attack us when we're distracted and so I think it's very important to, when we talk about our light, the reason of my title, <clears throat> it's important to talk about the darkness around us, that it is real, that it is very present, and it's uh, something that we need to be uh, aware of. Now, just as a side note, as I was making this point, I also was reminded of something. You, you see the world, and sometimes, you know, maybe being aware of the darkness isn't a struggle for any of us. We have all kinds of of devices and technology and, and information all around us that tells us of everything that's going on in the world. You know, things could be happening over there in the Middle East or in China or in Russia and what would back then take forever for them to really understand what's going on there. We'll know in seconds. We'll get a ding on our phone saying, look at this evil that's going on over there. Uh, 
it's kind of also hard to not see a lot of this darkness. And I think one danger and one problem that we can run into as Christians as well that we need to be aware of on this part is that we're supposed to be aware but not afraid of the darkness. I think a lot of us get kind of mixed up on that part. We see all of the evil in the world and we're afraid of what's to come, what's going to happen to me, how is the, the world going to end up. And so we end up kind of letting the devil win with letting fear overcome us. And, and a lot of the time that fear paralyzes us. It kind of makes us stop and really just unmotivates us to keep going, to say, why am I even going to keep on going? Look at how much evil is around us. Why am I going to go out into the world when there's just more and more evil happening? Breaks my heart to think of what just happened, and it's sad to think that it's, it's almost felt like a normal, but of the shooting that happened the other day. Every one of us have probably heard of it that happened at the school. I have a daughter now. That feels a lot different, and uh, evil is still in this world. But we're not supposed to be afraid of it. I'm, I'm confident in my God, that he's in control, that he knows what's going on. We're supposed to be focused, not fearful. Jesus tells us over and over these, these words, be aware, be watchful, be mindful. But never do you really ever hear Jesus say, be fearful of these things. Be afraid. Be scared of them. I think that's important for us to understand that this world is an evil world and there's darkness all around it. But we need to have the confidence and the awareness to go through it, seeing it, and being able to handle it head on. Knowing that Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, the all three in one, have made a way, have laid out a path. And that's, that's coming to my next point. It, understanding that there is a way. But the only way for us to know that there is a way is because that there's a light shedding the way. <clears throat> It says in John chapter 8, verse 12. Again, Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. When um, I went to Mexico one time with Miranda for our, our, our honeymoon, and there's this one activity or event that we ended up uh, finding. We were sick. So there wasn't really much that we could do, but there was this one event that we were able to do, and it was called, what was it called? It was called Senses, with an X. But the whole point of this activity was that you're supposed to walk through this tunnel, and they, they separated us. They didn't let us walk together. They said, there's two tunnels. You, Miranda, you're in this one. Sebastian, you're in this one. You're going to walk through them, and you're going to keep on walking until you get to the end. And the whole point of this tunnel is that it's pitch black in there. There's no light. They do their absolute best that where your eyes are open, it's like you can't see anything. Your eyes are fully, I, I don't know why I even had my eyes open if I couldn't see anything, but it just, I'd like to think I tried seeing something, but it was completely pitch black. And I can't tell you, I can't describe the feeling, but it was something that I've never felt before because when you realize that you can't see anything you start walking with a hesitation. You start going pretty slowly because you don't know where the next foot is supposed to land. They start making you walk through some different textures, through some grass, through some kind of stone area, through a little, you, you walk through a bridge or something. You, I couldn't see any of it, so I'm just telling you what I felt because that's all I had. I couldn't see anything. And I, we didn't get, Miranda took a long time because she was just taking, she was walking very slowly. And I was just trying to get out of there because I was starting to feel things and I didn't want to feel them anymore. But it was very, it was very scary being in a world where I couldn't see anything, where I didn't know where my next foot was going. And I imagine that's what this verse is kind of talking about. Jesus says he came to be the light of the world so that we do not no longer walk in darkness. Without Jesus, this world will still be full of darkness. There would be no light in this world. We wouldn't know where our next step is going. We wouldn't know where our life is going. We don't know anything. And I think I've mentioned it many times in the past that one of the biggest fears of man 
One of them is public speaking. We talked about it one time with the young kids that public speaking is a real and almost one of the most prominent fears in the world. But another one that's up there is just the plain fact that the fear of the unknown, just not knowing. I know that uh, for many people, just not being able to know whether where your finances are going, where you're going to go in your career, what something, how the way something's going to play out, that not knowing stresses us out. That not knowing makes us afraid because we don't know what's going to happen. But Jesus says he came so that we can walk. There will be no more darkness, but that we'll have the light of life. Jesus came into this world not to just be a light unto salvation, but he came to be a light for many other things as well. I think a lot of the times we, we lose focus on everything that Jesus is. Jesus isn't only our Savior. He is our Savior, and I'm so thankful for that. But there's many things that he is as well. Jesus came to be a light for, I'm going to give an example of some of them, for loneliness. There's a lot of people who live in this world alone. Whether they're surrounded by many people and many, a whole bunch of family, or they're actually alone Many of us experience this, this loneliness. In John chapter 15, verses 15 through 16, he says, No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all that I have heard from my Father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should, be, should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. God and Jesus shed light onto loneliness. They help us not feel alone. We are special. We are chosen. We are a chosen race. He's, we are his children. And I can't tell you after Miranda, after God, and then after Miranda, who is the next most important person in my life? And it's that little girl. We are his children, and he's chosen us. And he's, he's vowed to never leave us alone. Anxiety. It seems like everybody's struggling with this as well. I think, uh, I don't know what I was doing. I, I saw like a statistic, and I think... In, in regards to, I was just looking at some of our videos, and some of the most viewed videos, uh, lessons, are about anxiety. I think a lot of us struggle with this, whether it be something that we'd like to admit or not, something that's, you know, really clinical, or it's just something that we deal with on a, on a daily basis that we've just kind of become okay with. But in First Peter chapter 5, verses 6 through 7, he says, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, so that at the proper time, he may exalt you, casting all your anxieties on him because he cares for you. We have a solution to anxiety. He says, do not worry, but put your focus on him first and everything else will be, will be given to you. There's a way out. There's a path laid out to, for anxiety. We don't walk in darkness. We have a light that shed on that as well. Confusion. Because this world is very confusing. Where we're going is very confusing. The way things are is just confusing. John chapter 16, verse 13 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he speaks, he will, whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. We have the truth. There is no reason to wonder what is the truth. There is no reason to wonder what should we believe in. There should be no confusion because God has sent the helper. God has sent his spirit to bring understanding to all things. We have a solution to confusion. Sadness and grief, every one of us, and if not, eventually will experience some kind of loss or Sadness or this type of grief where we, it's just unbearable. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 4, he says, Surely he, speaking of Jesus, 
or he's prophesying of Jesus to come. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed him stricken, stricken, smitten by God, and afflicted. Jesus cares about us. He's carried and he, he takes all of our sorrows and he takes all of our griefs. He wants them. He doesn't want us to be alone with them, to be stuck with them, to be burdened by them. He wants us to cast them onto him. He's taken them. And lastly, as I mentioned at the beginning, Jesus is obviously a light in this world of darkness to our salvation. Everyone knows that John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. What this means is that there's nothing that Jesus has come to not shed light on. Jesus has came and there's, there's a light to be for everything that we're going to be going through. But we need to understand that, that he is the source of that light. He's the one that makes it clear and reveals it for us. I wanted my main focus to be, as I mentioned, our light in Matthew chapter 5, verses 15 through 16. This is where the main text, this is kind of the main uh, verse of this lesson. It says, you are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden, nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket, <clears throat> but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine be before others, so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. It's interesting because Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And then following in Matthew chapter 5, he says, you are the light of the world. What does this mean? Why, does it, why is it now us that is that? Sometimes when we read this, we, we, take, we, we understand that we are the light of the world. We see that part and we see the other part where we let our light shine before others. But I think we, we lose sight of that little part in the middle that he mentions there. Nor do people light a lamp and put it under a basket. How many of us are putting our light under a basket? How many of us leave here and we know and we love God and we praise Him, we sing for Him, and we, we pray while we're here, but when we leave, nobody can tell where that light is. We're not a light in the world. Can people notice us standing out in crowds? Can we be a light in this world of darkness? Do people say, why is that person so bright? Or is it because we're putting a, light, a basket over it? Are we covering it up? Are we, are we hiding it? I think that's a very scary thing that we can be doing. It can be happening with our friends. Maybe our friends are not the best people. Maybe our friends are not the best, are not even Christians or don't even, are, are sinners. And maybe we just don't want to lose them. Maybe we don't want to stand out and, and create that contrast and maybe have those difficult conversations. What about our coworkers? I can tell you for a fact, I know that's a thing. I'm self-employed now, but I know that that was one of the struggles that I had when I worked with coworkers, that it's easy to blend in, that it's easy to get carried on with the way everyone else is being that we can start maybe speaking the way they speak, that we can maybe start doing the things that they do. And instead of us changing them, instead of us shining our light on them, we kind of start dimming our light and, and kind of blending in with their darkness. It's a very real thing that we need to be aware of. What about our family? Do we are, does our family know and does our family see the light in us? Can they see something different in us? Can they notice that, hey, you know what? He's different She's different, or are we putting everything under a basket? Are we afraid that our light will push everyone around us away? I think these are things just to think about. Like I said, it's important that we reflect on our lives. Our, every single one of us have different lives. I think of uh, the other day I was thinking of a word. The word is sonder. Sonder is, a, is an interesting word if you look it up. It's the idea that every single one of us lives complex and different lives. You have experienced so many different things that I, is so different than I have. That we all have complex lives and we all have different situations that we lived in, different people that we're surrounded by. But it's amazing how we just all, that all of that happens 
simultaneously around us. I know that living a double life can be very exhausting. Trying to to play both parts, playing the part of being a Christian and being a light, but at the same time wanting to be like the world. And even though that's not our desire, our actions aren't reflecting that. I think it's important to look at Matthew chapter 6. I don't know if I put it up there. Yes, I did. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and money. It's impossible. It's impossible to live that double life, to be able to, as they say, have both cakes and eat them. You can't do it. Jesus says either you will hate the money, you'll hate the world, you'll hate the sin, and you'll hate the darkness of this world, or you'll hate him. There's only two choices. We need to reflect on our lives and see who it is that we are serving. What master are we are serving? Kelly talks about it a lot. Do we serve ourselves or are we serving God? I think it's important to reflect on those two. I'm a nerd, so science appeals to me. So I wanted to, when I was thinking about light, I think about physics. And so there's some stuff that I, I, I kind of wanted to implement on this too. Light has the ability to do a couple things. And another one that I wanted to put in there, but I didn't really knew, know how to tie it in, light can be absorbed. And I think we'll talk about that in a bit. But light can be refracted and it can be reflected. Uh, these are some images, some diagrams of it. Refraction, you see there, if you've ever put a pencil in some water, it kind of looks like a pencil split in half. And then reflection, obviously, we think of a mirror. The Bible talks a lot and a lot and a lot about reflection. Being in 1 Corinthians in chapter 11, verse 1, Paul says, Be imitators of me as I am of Christ. I don't know if uh, Matt still wears it. I know he used to carry a, a little mirror on it. And I remember asking him one time, what is, Why do you have that? I thought it was metal. Why do you have that piece of metal? He's like, No, it's so that we can reflect Christ. It's supposed to mean I'm trying to reflect Christ. Is our life a reflection? Our, is our light? So we are the medium. We are the surface. Jesus is the light. Are we reflecting that light? Are we allowing it to come as Jesus is and come straight off so that people see Jesus when they look at us? Are we being Jesus' reflection? The mirror only sees whatever it's... You only see whatever the mirror sees. Nothing is different. Everything's exactly the same. You, when you look at a mirror, there's not going to be a third eyebrow or something. It's exactly the way that it is. Nothing has been changed. Our lives are to reflect Christ. His love, his life, his obedience, everything that Jesus is, we are to be an exact reflection of that. Analyze and think about your life. Look at the reflection that you're giving. If you could do that, imagine yourself looking at your life. Do you see Jesus? Do you see his obedience? Jesus said, not my will, but yours. Is our life like that? Do we say, Jesus, whatever you want. God, your will, not mine. Does our patience look like that? I know I need that. I struggle with that. And I need prayers and I need help with that. But Jesus is the perfect example of patience. Does our patience reflect Jesus? Or are we easily and quick to get angry, quick to respond, quick to, get, uh, to be uh, tempered? Does our joy look like Jesus? I remember speaking, I don't know where I was talking, but oh, we were at a, we were at a Bible study at the grind and we were talking about happiness, but... I think happiness is better used as joy. I like the word joy because sometimes life isn't going to go the way we want it to be. James talks about it. Let, um, just to paraphrase, let everything in your life be counted as joy, whether it's good or bad. Everything that goes on in your life, count it as joy. See, the, try to find the way that God is using that situation in your life to reflect him. Does our joy look like that? 
Or have we been just overcome with anger and overcome with sadness and depression? Like I said, does our obedience look like Jesus? Do we follow his word? Do we say, God, I want to do your will? I know what you've asked me to do and I want to do it. Does our obedience look like that? And if our life isn't a reflection, <clears throat> that means the people around us are not seeing that either. People are looking at us. People are always watching. In 1 Timothy, keep a close watch on yourself and, your teach, and the teaching. Persist in this, for by doing so, you will save both yourself and your hearers. We are surrounded with... We are all surrounded here, mainly, by followers. And people have the same desire to follow Christ and to do His, his will and to, and to love God. But when we step out this building... The majority of people around us are not that. The people around us are going to be watching us, whether you like it or not, and the way that you react, the way that you act, the way that you speak, and they will remember the way that you are living your life. And then when it comes up to conversation that you are a Christian, that you are trying to follow God, there may be some things that in your life that contradict that. We need to be very aware of the way that we're living our lives and understand that we are reflecting that light, that we're supposed to be. But when you think of the word refraction, the pencil doesn't look exactly the way that it looks going in. You look at a pencil and that's not the way a pencil should look. It shouldn't look like it's cut in half or, or separated. The, uh, the definition of refraction is very scientific, but... Essentially, it's just the bending of light. It's not exactly the same. And so I want us to, to understand that the image you see is not exactly what the source was. It's been bent. It's been changed. It's been distorted. It's important to make sure that our light isn't anything other than Jesus Christ, that it hasn't been changed, that it hasn't been warped, that it hasn't been... Un, it's just not, that it's not unpure. I think a lot, of the, a lot of the time we try to bend our life around Christ, bend our life around Christianity. Maybe, maybe I can do this and still serve God and, and try to get that both in. That's just not the way it is. We cannot try to bend our lifestyle, our choices, our preferences around Christ. We need to reflect Christ 100% the way it is. And our reflections and our actions of Christ, so when we think about just our life and the reflection that we do give off, the light that we do share, it isn't so that we can glorify ourselves in it. <clears throat> in Matthew chapter 5, we look, go back to that same verse, but at the end of verse 16, he says, So that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. I think a lot of people maybe and whether they, they realize it or, or trying to or not, we are not supposed to be here so that people can see us. It isn't, the way it says there is not so that they can see your good works and notice you. It's so that they can see your good works and notice God. So they can glorify the Father who is in heaven. The Pharisees, as we, as we know, fell into this trap where they began to be prideful in their service. They began to boast in everything that they were doing. Look at how much we're praying. Look at how much we're giving. Look at how much we're serving God. And they were bringing the attention to them. We need to make sure that our works are glorifying God. That everything that we do exalts Him. That it elevates Him. 1 Corinthians... Oh, I guess I didn't put the verse there. I think it's in... Um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 31, I believe. I might be wrong, but it says that, uh, so whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. This is our everything. Our everything is to be servants, to, to reflect Christ's life and to glorify God, to praise Him, to, to elevate Him to His most highest position, because that's where He deserves to be. That's what our life's purpose is, to be good servants and to, and to praise God in our lives. We have a beautiful honor of being Christ's ambassadors. 
And I think it's important that we don't fall for the devil's trap, like I said, and like, and like it's mentioned in the Bible. The devil is just waiting for us, waiting for us to lose track, waiting for us to get distracted, waiting for us to be drunk on life, if, if you want to say it like that. I think it's important that we don't let him trick us and lose sight of all the darkness around us. The world needs every single one of us to be a light. This church needs to be a light in the community. We pray for that many times. But I also think that it's important that every single one of us go out and spread light in every single one of our communities as well. In every one, single one of our environments. That's our duty. I need prayers for that. So that way I can, I can be the best light that I can be so we can praise God in that too. Just take this time to analyze your life. This is the lesson that I had prepared for us this morning. Reflect on your life. See where it is that you're at and, and, and determine whether or not we are really reflecting Christ and, and giving off the proper light. If we need prayers for it, if we need help, if we, under, if we feel like maybe we just don't know how, maybe we're afraid that we're going to lose everyone around us. I know that that's, I think, a big fear. I remember in Panama, <clears throat> when I did go to the mission trip, I think a big portion of the, of the conversations and the, the stories that I encountered were people afraid that if they decided to follow Christ and they decided to live for Christ, that everyone around them would reject them, that everyone around them would leave. But then we made it clear and realized, made them and helped them realize that they aren't alone. That the family of God spreads further than just this building and the people that we have here. But the family of God is throughout the whole world. That we are all in this together. That they're not going to be alone in their, in their efforts. If that's something that you need help with, need encouragement with, I encourage you to come up when we, ask, when we have the time for prayers. And... If you haven't <clears throat> obeyed his word, if you haven't put on Christ, as Galatians 2.20 says, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. If Christ isn't living in us yet, and that's something that, that you would like to happen today, if you want to study more about it, then we also have this time of encouragement, of, of invitation, that you can come up and ask for prayers or ask for help as we sing this, this uh, song of encouragement. Yet anew, make whole again your empty, wasted years. He will restore, and your iniquities remember no more. Bring him your every care if great or small whatever troubles you oh bring it all bring him the haunting fears the nameless dread thy heart he will relieve and lift up the head. Bring him your weariness. Receive his rest. Wipe out your blinding tears upon his breast. His love is wonderful, His praise was clear. Then wings bright drops in Him shall be desolate. Bless Savior of us all, Almighty Friend. 
His presence shall be ours unto the end. Without Him life would be how dark, how drear. But with Him morning breaks and heaven is near. Thank you, Sebastian. I want to thank everyone for being here this morning, especially we'll extend a warm welcome to our visitors. We invite you back every opportunity that you have to be with us. Uh, our closing hymn will be number 703, number 703. <clears throat> and I forgot who has, oh, Alistair has closing prayer. <laughs> 703. I love you with the love of the Lord. I love you with the love of the Lord. I see in you the glory of my King, and I love you with my love of the Lord. Please love me with the love of the Lord. Please love me with the love of the Lord. If you want to do God's will, then the need you must fulfill is to love me with the love of the Lord. He loves me with the love of the Lord. He loves me with the love of the Lord. My debts were all paid when he rose up from the grave, and he loves me with the love of the Lord. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for this morning, for allowing us to be gathered here together to sing praises, to be joined in fellowship, to to enjoy this time that we have together to glorify you, God. We're so thankful for that. We thank you for every blessing that you've given us, and of course, the greatest blessing of all being your Son. Father, at this moment, we thank you for the lesson that we had today from our brother Sebastian, Father. Pray that we may take it into our hearts to always remember that in, in the world there is so much darkness, and if we focus on it, we let it corrupt us, we let it misguide us, and we fall into it, Father. But when we focus on you, when we focus on your light, Father, it shines a path for us for, uh, to follow and for us to be a light to others as you've, you've told us to do, Father. And it is not an easy thing, but we always remember that we can look towards you for guidance and for encouragement and that we have our family here to support one another. And for that, we are eternally grateful, Father. We pray for those that are not with us right now for uh, whatever reason it may be, physical, spiritual, um, that you may keep them safe, Father, that they may be able to return to us and that we can be an encouragement to them and a care for them, Father. Father, there are many that are on our, uh, on our prayer list uh, right now, and we pray that, that you may keep them safe in, in whatever needs that they have, medical needs, spiritual needs, physical needs, Father, that you may keep them safe, and once again, that we can also be an encouragement to them in, in showing care for them and praying for them, Father, in whatever manner that we can do, Father. Father, we pray for the world, for, for the darkness that is found in it, Father, that, that we pray that, that there may be light that can be shined in there, whether from us or from other Christians, that, that all of us can be a blessing to the world. Father, as we depart, we pray that it may keep us safe and throughout this week, that I, we always remember to look towards you, and as this lesson has taught us, to be a light towards others. All these things we pray in Christ's name. Amen.